Browns general manager Andrew Berry has developed a reputation for leaving no stone unturned, and once again, he proved that. Friday night, the Cleveland Browns trade for defensive ends to Darius Smith from the Minnesota Vikings, and we will break it all down now, live on Locked on Browns. You are Locked on Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Appreciate all the everydayers. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every day. Lots of new traffic the last couple of weeks being the draft, rookie mini camp. If you're new, why don't you stick around, subscribe to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel, make sure your notifications on, and we are always available, always free wherever you get your podcasts. So we're going to get into this in depth. Uh, the Cleveland Browns in the move made last night. Segment three, obviously, this defensive end room got real deep, real quick. We get some thoughts on that. Jeff Lloyd joined by Sports Illustrated, Pete Smith. Segment two, the magnitude of move like this. A lot of people question where the Browns feel they are. Obviously, the Browns feel maybe they were a player or two away and go ahead and pull the trigger on a big-time move. But first and foremost, the Cleveland Browns late Friday evening most people you know off doing their own thing with their families you know invested into the nba playoffs you know your local baseball team but the cleveland browns went out make a power move uh andrew barry and obviously an old friend over in minnesota agreed to terms the browns have acquired defensive ends of darius smith this has been a guy we have talked about pete smith and i whether it was a few years ago when his time with the ravens were over last year when his signs with the packers were over and then even when he was supposed to go back to baltimore didn't go back to baltimore ended up going to the Minnesota Vikings, but Pete, it always seems they tried to make sure they've got a solid counterpiece for Miles Garrett. Last year, of course, with Jadavion Clowney, they thought they had that guy, but it just was certainly not the same guy in 2022 that he was in 2021. They went out and a little bit of a different style than maybe we've been accustomed here with the Browns, but not everybody's you know way of go an approach to getting it done necessarily has to be the same. Do you get it done? And a guy like a player like Zadarius Smith has proven through now what will be his four stop in the NFL. He has the ability to do just that. Yeah, Zadarius Smith's a game changer. Uh, he, he's a game changer in the, in the sense that he's a premium pass rusher. He's a game changer in terms of what it does to the Browns' defense. Um, he, you know. It, before you were sort of looking at this and how are you going to get to the point where you have Miles Garrett and Okoronkwo on the field? Now it's how do we get to sub packages? And <laughs> that's the whole thing now is is where where are you going to line guys up? In fact, I'm curious to see if Miles Garrett suddenly becomes the inside guy a whole lot because they have two very credible guys on the outside. Find um, the turd. Yes. Um, but you know, this is a situation where the 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 Minnesota Vikings. He, he, he wanted out. He let them know he wanted out. The Vikings already signed his replacement. It was just a matter of finally making it work. And, you know, they, the Browns took advantage of a great situation, not unlike they did with Amari Cooper. It's, yep. you know, from that standpoint, it's sort of ridiculous that this is the second year in the row that Andrew Barry just gets to look at everybody and go, hey, look at what I can do with just a fifth round pick and turn it into a, a, a premium player. Uh but yeah, look, Zadari Smith's just better than Jadavian Clowney. But to your point, he is different. J Clowney's more, a little bit more explosive, uh, a little bit more powerful. But Zadari Smith actually gets to the quarterback, and he does it a whole <laughs> lot uh, beyond his pressure rate, which is significant. Um, he has 36 sacks in the last 49 games, and and you know that's really 36 sacks in three seasons because uh, he suffered a back injury in 2020, uh, 2021 in the first game of the season that kept him out the whole year, which by the way, you know, does give you a little bit of pause, although it's bizarre that the Vikings two premium ed edge rushers both had back injuries uh, and issues like that, but he bounced back, had a great season this past year. And Zedaria Smith uh, from, from had the ability, they, the, the Vikings did 
right by the player. Uh, Quezzi Adolfo Mensa is doing what Andrew Barry often did uh, and gave uh, Zadari Smith sort of the ability to choose where he wanted to go. He did not ship him to the Cardinals. He did not ship him to the Texans. <laughs> he gave him a little bit of that, uh, that choice, uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, professional courtesy there in making that trade in a, in, in an effort to continue to improve his reputation with players in Minnesota, with future free agents uh, and do all those things. So it, it works out for everybody in, in some ways because the Vikings just didn't have any leverage. They weren't going to get a big haul. So they sort of got something out of it, even if it's not great for them and the Browns get something huge for it. And Zadari Smith almost signed with the Browns previously. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, he, he thought about it before when he went to Minnesota uh, and now he gets to play with Miles Garrett. Zadarius Smith's no fool. He understands that playing across from a Daniel Hunter was going to be very good for him. And now he gets understands that playing across from Miles Garrett and now potentially with Okoronkwo and his old buddy Dalvin Tomlinson now could be very, very good for him. And he could have a, a monster season in Cleveland. And the other thing is, is you can take it easy on them. I mean, with the amount of guys you have here now, you know, everybody should be well rested. You should be able to have a pretty solid rotational uh, system. You know, if everybody follows Mike Clay's work over at ESPN, he now has a Cleveland Browns edge room ranked number three overall in the NFL. Um, we'll get to it in segment three because this is going to be some talking points and some questions about some other guys, you know, who are in that room now and exactly where they're standing will be here. But again, here, this is, you know, it's chump change that you're leaving down. You know, you go to the diner, you get a coffee, you get a bagel, you know, you pay with a 10, you get $3.37 left. You know, you always leave the 37 cents. That's like, the, the, you know, the, that's what these day three picks are. The last year you took a fifth round pick, you turned it into a thousand yard receiver. This year you're taking a possible fifth round selection and you're turning it into a guy that could possibly have 10 sacks for you. Um, these are like no brainer moves. Um, and maybe always in the past, you know, and especially in a move like this where you're trying to accommodate the player and not every NFL general manager does that, the accommodating place maybe wasn't necessarily the Cleveland Browns. But now it is a lot more of an attractive place to come to. It is a lot more appealing place to come to. Certainly you look at the guys that are in this room on the defensive side of the ball, Jim Schwartz. Wow. Hey, Jim Schwartz. I've never really teamed up with Jim Schwartz, but so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. All these guys have had. Really, really good success with this gentleman. You know, now it is my turn. Now it is my opportunity. Um, and you know, look again. We we talk about all the time, Pete, about hedging down on the investments that this team has made. Whether it's Deshaun Watson, so where do you go out? You know, you get him. You get Cooper. Um, granted, that was a week before, but you know, the Browns knew knew they were in more on Deshaun Watson than maybe the rest of us did. Then you <clears throat> go this year to Elijah Moore. Tillman, you invest even more there. Um, you know, the defensive side of the ball, you bring in Jim Schwartz, you've gone Tomlinson, you've gone Okoronkwo, you've gone a defensive tackle with one of your first selections, you've gone defensive end with one of your first selections in the draft. Now you get in a guy like Zadarius Smith. You it's just it, it's great to see the aggressiveness. And you know, we're gonna get to this a little bit more here in segment two, but it's saying, look, you know, what do you need to have? What is the premium you need to have to be one of these upper echelon teams? You look at these teams that draft late in the draft in the first round every year. The Chiefs, what did they draft? They drafted an edge rusher. The Philadelphia Eagles, what did they draft late in round one? They drafted an edge rusher. It's making sure that you have your bases covered at the premium positions. Yeah, I mean, the Browns have built up a very talented corner room. They've got now a very talented defensive end group that's going to uh, complement those guys. Too many times last year, quarterbacks were able to either just hang in the pocket or extend plays, and receivers could, would eventually get open just by virtue of having so much time. This is going to up, the, you know, reduce the time the quarterback has to make a throw. It's going to reduce the amount of times he gets to operate from a clean pocket, and it's going to increase the number of times he feels stress and makes a bad decision. Let's let's not kid ourselves. If you are a quarterback. It's all well and good to say I'm going to keep my eyes downfield and, and watch what's going on until you have to deal with the fact that Miles Garrett, uh, Zedaria Smith, and o Obanya Okoronkwo can be on you right now and are going to, they're, they're not going to do it gently. So it just all it adds stress and all leads to what should be and increase in turnovers, uh, stops, and everything else, which is going to make your defense better. And if the Browns' offense works as it's supposed to, and now they're playing with leads, 
then you can, you know, if you get up 14, this is your life now. You are dealing with this, you know, for the foreseeable future. This uh, Zadari Smith, in, in, in combination with these other guys, is a closer. Uh, look, it, there's just not enough superlatives to put on something like this. And, you know, for the Browns, day three JF picks, these are the guys that now, I mean, years ago, we say, hey, man, he drafted a guy for the Cleveland Browns, day five, you know, round five, round six. Not only could this guy be in four line for a lot of playing time his rookie season, he could potentially start. Those are things of the past year as far as we're talking about the Cleveland Browns. We're going to switch it up. We're going to get to segment two here. And there's a magnitude to this. And, you know, you can never be satisfied as a general manager. We're going to get deeper into this. Jeff Lloyd, Pete Smith, your latest lockdown Browns. Zadarius Smith, the latest to join the land. Looking for a delicious snack but don't want all of the sugar and calories? Then you need the best tasting protein bar ever built you got to try them if you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on taste we've got just the thing for you built bars and built puffs they are healthy and they taste amazing seriously they taste so amazing you won't think they're good for you you got to try them what makes built bars so good well for starters they are all covered in 100 real dark chocolate that's right real chocolate for years we have talked about ordering your bars over at built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Head to Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of built bars. You can pick up a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. If you're closer to Sam's, run in and grab a 13 bar box with our hit flavors brownie batter puff and Cheryl puff. And guys and gals, you can thank me later. Jeff Lloyd, Pete Smith, your latest Locked On Browns. Appreciate all the everydayers who make Locked On Browns their first listen every single day to all the new listeners hit the subscribe button we'll be around have been around we'll always be around pete the magnitude of a move like this like you go out and you show everybody in here and now look you just had some veterans in obviously this news drops as you had the rookies and the udfas in on friday morning you go out and make a move like this it's telling people that a number one you're not satisfied but a number two, you're willing to go as far as you possibly can to ensure you're putting out the best possible product in order to compete. Look, we've hit on this. We've talked on this. And nobody's blind to the fact that the AFC is just absolutely stinking loaded as far as teams within this conference. And, you know, you can say, oh, well, we made the move for Okoronkwo. And, you know, everybody thought that was a great move. And everybody well, is he truly a starter? Or is he a rotational piece? You know, then there's Alex Wright. Oh, we drafted Isaiah McGuire. There's Isaiah Thomas. Uh, you know, Pete's boy that he's been waxing on now for a week. I mean, you know, I, I think the files are probably going to go away from Lonnie Phelps over at Brian's Digest because that shit may have sailed as fast as it started taking to the water. But it's telling people that we are here and, you know, whatever. You know, last year, obviously, the Browns had to take some society lumps, you know, people getting their shots in about the move they made for Deshaun Watson. But you look at this team, you look at this roster, you know, it's really, really hard to find a weak link right now. And he said, look, I got a room I like, but now I got a chance to make this a room that I love. And you want to know what? Let's do it. Well, I mean, it's the difference between saying you think you can make the playoffs and you're, you're going we, to make the playoffs. We, we, not only going to make the playoffs, but we think we can win the Super Bowl. Um, you could have, you could make an argument that the Browns could have sort of done what they've done to this point and said, "All right, we're going to see, make sure all this works, and then push push our chips in." There, instead, they've said, "We've got this four year window. We're going to use all four years." And Zaria Smith says, "We're serious about winning right this second, and you know, seeing how far we can push it because." If you get in the tournament, you never know what can happen. And, and, and now they've got more guys. I mean, that's uh, certainly a statement to the guys in that locker room of expectations. Uh, that's a statement to obviously fans and, and everybody else. But it, it just telling your organization who you are is important. I think there's no, no question that guys in that locker room are excited, but it also is a reminder of, you know, we, we, we have to come out firing right now and be a good football team because they have invested this much. And if stuff doesn't work, you know, they're going to move on from guys or whatever. And we're now at a point where, you know, instead of having guys that are, are hopefully going to figure it out. Now we have, you know, young players and rookies who have to come in and go, I don't know if I can make, make this team. <laughs> like that's a, a big change for this team. That's a big change for expectations. So there's a lot, to be said for what this move does, what this move means. And 
it can it can lead to big things, but it's obviously going to ramp up pressure on guys in the locker room. I think hope we hope in the best way. Yeah, well, that is should be the point of it, and you know. Of course, you know, several seasons ago, you know, it was a black mark if you weren't a player who was able to make the Cleveland Browns. Now, look, there's work for you. There's a lot of work for you if you can't make the Cleveland Browns. And that's all well and, you know, that's all well and good. And, you know, but it all comes down to what you can do on the field. But I mean, you talk about an offensive line, you know, where you have, you know, a Hall of Fame talent, a Pro Bowl talent, another former All Pro, I'm sorry, two former All Pros on that offensive line. You know, you we know what you have. It you brought in in Dalvin Tomlinson. Obviously, everybody knows with Clowney, the wide receivers, the tight ends, Nick Chubb, the quarterback, the cornerbacks, the safety room, and you know, it, it legitimately looks like this roster. You know, you want to bring in another defensive tackle? You can, sure, but I mean, it looks like this roster is about as locked and loaded as one can be. And, you know, for a lot of warts to take because, you know, you made the playoffs the first season, then you didn't the next two. And obviously, certainly some, you know, unforeseen circumstances, you know, in the second year of the Barry Stefanski regime with Baker's arm basically blowing up in week two. Uh, last year, taking the gamble and it going from six games to 11 games, which basically derailed your entire season that year as well, even though you had Jacoby Brissett play admirably. But this is one now where you get, you know, OTAs and you get in there, which will almost be mid July now because the Browns are going to get the extra week of training camp because they play the Hall of Fame game. It's going to be big. I mean, th there is a lot of pressure now on this team because the level of, you know, the expectation level of winning for this team just seems to increase, Pete, probably with each and every week up until training camp begins. Well, look, everybody just wants to, you know, you're just a Darius Smith. You're going, I want to go to the Greenbrier too. So, I mean, there, there's that element to it. Um, and he, who knows, maybe he gets to, he, he gets to go to Puerto Rico now. Um, but yeah, look, the, the, the Browns get this unique schedule this year. It's unclear, you know, if this, this will benefit or not, but because of the hall of fame game, just the way their calendar works, they lose the week early and then they get it back for training camp, which is going to make that a little bit more of a slog. Um, how are they going to adapt to that? Um, are they going to veterans get more days off and, you know, really get a lot out of those young guys and, and, and in ways that we've seen in the past, like you're not going to have Joel Batonio, you know, crushing it every day, like grinding it out. You're not going to have Nick sure. Chubb grinding it out. You're going to let miles Garrett get some breaks. Um, is that going to allow some of these guys to potentially put themselves in the position to contribute? Uh, you know, is Isaiah McGuire or Alex Wright ready to sort of bring something? Obviously, the, all eyes are on Siaki Ika because he's got to be able to come in and and spell Dalvin Tomlinson. Uh, even though there are a, a curious amount of people who think Siaki Ika is going to start right away, uh, no, but he does <laughs> need to. He does need to help. He does need to provide some pressure up the middle and, and be good for what Jim Schwartz wants to do. Uh, but there's a lot going on. Cameron Mitchell is going to get, probably get a ton of reps uh, because mm -hmm. you're not going to try to wear out all those guys. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to see what this allows them to do in terms of, of training camp and how they want to manage things. And the, uh, when they eventually have the uh, combined practices with the Philadelphia Eagles, which will, you know, is going to be insane. Uh, those two groups going to get going against each other now. Uh, that's going to be a huge, huge test, uh, physicality wise, and everything else. So yeah, there's there's a lot to sort of figure out and uh, be excited about, especially if you're a a coach uh, trying to trying to put all this together. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about a week where some work's going to be done. Those joint practices with the Philadelphia Eagles, man, the interior and obviously off the tackle versus the pass rushers. I mean, you, you can't ask for, you can't draw up any better work to get over the summer. Uh, we're going to get to our third and final segment here because just a couple of weeks ago, we were having some conversations about, you know, some younger guys on this roster, are, are they ready, if need be, to possibly start? Well, the question now is, are they possibly going to be here come September? Jeff Lloyd, Pete Smith, your latest Locked on Browns. Look, we've been crushing it here since the draft. Obviously, you know, uh, OTA the week uh, two weeks ago, last week, uh, obviously the beginning of rookie and UDFA uh, camp as those guys came in. Andrew Barry drops a trade on us. Look, stick around here all day, every day, five episodes minimum per week. 
365 days a year, Locked On Browns. Make sure you're subscribed and following for the YouTube channel so you get all the notification when it drops and available wherever you get your audio podcasts. The defensive end room, I mean, there were episodes not even, you know, a little bit more than three, you know, a little bit more than five, six weeks ago. You know, is Alex Wright possibly ready to start? Alex Wright started game last year. I mean, straight up happened. Alex Wright was a starting defensive end for this team last year. Alex Wright right now could possibly be viewed as fourth, if not your fifth defensive end. Uh, but in the past weeks, you know, obviously they have brought in Agbenai Okoronkwo. You have drafted Isaiah McGuire. You have now traded for Zadarius Smith. You have, of course, Alex Wright in the room. You have Isaiah Thomas in the room. Um, you, ha- you brought in Phelps, some UDFA guys. Pete, this is an extremely, extremely crowded room uh, for the Browns now, and that is fantastic in every sense that you say it because it's great to say, well, he, all right, well, he's no good. Just get rid of him. The, the the times where you have to cut guys and know it's difficult because you just don't have the room for them, that's when you see the fruits of your labor. That's when you see how hard everybody has worked within your front office to help put a room together like this. But, you know, you talk Miles Garrett, and look, you know, what we will not stop saying that Miles Garrett has the potential to be the de- defensive player of the year. Some of the things that hold that back is overall team success and basically when your team's Regular season ends. Does it end without a playoff appearance anyway whatsoever? You know, the more guys you can get around Miles, the less people can worry about Miles. And when you bring in, you know, a Dalvin Tomlinson, when you add like you have to this defensive end room, it gives the opportunity for Miles to get more one-on-ones, which he wins probably 99 out of 100 times. But this DN room now, Pete, even if you said this team didn't have Miles Garrett, if you said it was a Darius Smith, Okoronkwo, Elijah McGuire, Alex Wright. You'd be like, that's not a bad room there. You know, you have veteran, you have younger, you know what I'm saying? You can see a path to the future of that room. But then when you look at it all as, you know, basically the best overall edge player in the entire NFL is the top guy in that room. This is insane. Well, I mean, look, Andrew Barry has been preaching and preaching about how he wants the most competitive 90 man roster he can have to lead to the most competitive 53 man roster he can have. And, you know, he's living up to that word. Um, you know, beyond the top three guys, it's going to be a fight. You know, it's going to be a, not just a fight for who's going to win that spot. It's going to be a fight for who gets reps. Uh, you know, you, you're going to have guys who are now pissy because that guy got 10 reps. I only got six or whatever it is uh, <laughs> in a given period. Uh, and and <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Like in the Hall of Fame game and stuff, you're going to have like a rotation of these guys. Because again, I, I, Kevin Stefanski gets fired if Miles Garrett, uh, D- Dalvin Tomlinson, uh, Z- Zadarius Smith, or Okoronkwo are on the field in that game. Uh, so they could get fired if they're even in Canton, Ohio. To be honest with you, <laughs> they they're gonna they're gonna get a lot of reps in those games to 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 make an argument. But like the, the Browns are in an interesting situation because look if. If it starts heading in a particular direction, let's say Alex Wright just isn't what they need him to be. They can trade him at this point now, like yep. in August, obviously not now they've got, because injury insurance is still a major factor in all of this, but you know, they're valuable enough that they can potentially flip a guy and get something back. If it's, you know, recoup even if, one of those fifth like round a, picks that you just gave Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Like uh, who cares if it's a seventh, you know, it's, yep. it's not waving him um, beyond the, the potential practice squad implications. And the Browns are, are, are going to be in a position where they can attract some guys there, but yeah, guys are going to be fighting for every rep they can get. Uh, you're not good. Again, it, it ups the intensity of practice <laughs> because you've got guys who are sitting there and go, Oh, if I, if I half ass it, that may be it for me. I've got to go hard all the time. Now, the flip side of that is now the training staff and those guys have to be smart, making sure guys aren't like, you know, Alabamaing themselves uh, into the ground. But that's sort of what you want. You want these guys to really to to really put forth their best effort, really make the improvements necessary. Uh, they can't have a situation they had the past two years where we're, we're finding out twice in a row that guys were just sort of in the building until they needed to be, and then and then went home, not putting in the necessary work, like. 
those days are over. You, you're now, if you want to be on this football team, you've got to put in the extra work because it's just too competitive not to. And the other thing is, is because you're going to get, you get the opportunity of so many quality reps that, you know, the reputation is there for your own value to get somewhere else, uh, you know, obviously and, and have, you know, your tape put out there and, you know, say Alex Wright goes out and has two sacks in, you know, preseason games. And there still might not be a room, room for him. I'm not saying that's the case or it isn't. Even Isaiah Thomas, you, you go out and you can have three sacks. You, you know, you were seventh round pick the year before. Um, still only 24 years old. You know, you're a guy that shows versatility to play against the run, versatility, you know, to be a pass rusher as well. But, you know, they just signed a free agent. They just traded for a veteran. They just drafted somebody with another third round pick. It could leave you very much on the inside looking out. So, you know, for what they've done here, the amount of work that Andrew Barry's put in, in this room and can used to put it in every room on this roster. I don't know how the man sleeps. I don't know how there is time for his beautiful wife and family. I mean, I give him a lot of credit because this guy is a relentless worker and it's, you know, it's one thing to say it. It's one thing to you know say the words and, you know, and I will never, da, 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 never not. Say. It's truly, I mean, you know, it was a Friday night, just had your rookie in UDFA, your first workout with these guys, and you pull something like this off. And, you know, somebody had, you know, somebody had sent me a message asking about, you know, this have anything to do with the schedule? No. <laughs> I just chant, you know, and, oh, with, the, with the tough games in the beginning? No. Here's an opportunity to improve my football team, and it's not going to cost me much. And you know what? I can always make money, and Jimmy Haslam will always find a way to, you know, allow us to have the money. So, yes, if it makes my team better, we are going to make that move. Granted, it you know it, it puts some other guys who are on the roster in a more difficult spot, but you know it's about like you said, putting the best fifty three out on the field. You know, come I guess it's September tenth, whatever it may be. But that is what the ultimate goal, and that is what the ultimate description and title of what Andrew Barry does for this team is: is make the football team better and never never be satisfied on what you have on your roster. And this is just another example of it. And this DN room, I mean, you talk about the fact. You probably know you know it's Miles. You know it's obviously going to be Zadarius Smith. You know it's going to be Okoronkwu. You figure McGuire probably has a good shot here because, you know, he was part of the process of the new defense coordinator. That's four. Alex Wright is a potential fifth DN. Isaiah Thomas in that mix. Pete's boy, Lonnie Phelps. I mean, it's it, it's incre it's incredible because, you know, this is a team that we were talking about last year in Atlanta when they got the tar beat out of them and basically their soul taken from them where it was Alex Wright and I think it was Isaiah Thomas who started. And this room is just light years, light years better from when it was then. No question. Look, I mean, the, the goal has been to just build up your football team, make, make yourself a better roster, get yourself, you know, starting now, it's your best 90. But uh, when you're in the season, it's your best 53 plus whatever you carry on the practice squad. Um, and you need all those guys because you're, you're going to have to have somebody step up when there's an injury or – development over the course of the season uh, and, and the last two years in particular, and some of that was by design. Um, you saw what happened when, when they just got worn down and ran out of guys. I mean, it, it was a joke to watch them play the Atlanta Falcons without Jadevian Clowney and Miles Garrett. Uh, that is no longer an issue with depth. That doesn't mean you can, sustain an infinite amount of injuries and there are players that you just can't afford to lose for a long period of time but um, you've got to be able to sustain and get through some of these games and and the browns have sort of wilted at times um, and they've been unable to close out games at times um, they are loading up with a, a group of guys that should be able to show the t the necessary fortitude and start closing teams out and potentially closing them out a whole lot earlier than they have in the past uh, no question. And if anybody's thumbing through social media, if you see Daryl Ryder's post, um, apparently they're not a bunch of basketball players um, because uh, that rim and that backboard and the ground around it is taking a pounding. These boys, not much round ball, not much round ball whatsoever. But the big news of the day, the Cleveland Browns have traded for defensive end Zedarius Smith from the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, we talk about the impact of the trade, the deal within itself, the magnitude, the statement this gives off from the Cleveland Browns as far as saying, look, we're here, we're not going away, and so much so that we don't think we're going away. We're even we're basically putting a checker on a checker and basically doubling down on the fact that we think we can be as relevant in the AFC as we think we can be in telling everybody that. And, of course, the defensive end room. This room was once 
Miles Garrett, and some kids. This room is now Miles Garrett and a bunch of solid quality pass rushers and guys who can play against the run. And how many roster spots are going to be open there are not going to be a ton. And it's going to be a dogfight between some of these young kids. He is Pete Smith, Browns Digest, SportsIllustrated.com. Make sure you're checking everything over there. Pete and his team do a fantastic job. Make sure you're following at underscore Pete Smith underscore myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. I've been here covering this team since 2017 for Lockdown Browns. I am not going anywhere anytime soon, so make sure you're following all the everydayers who make Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. You guys are greatly appreciated. It's all the new traffic that keeps coming in. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast here on YouTube. Notifications on so when the content drops, you guys are there to consume it. Oh, Always available, always free, wherever you get your audio podcast. Up until the next time, kids, this has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB. Let's go, Browns.